four gears to get to 60, folks. Oh my God, this thing's geared short. I had to get through four gears to get to 60. What's my top speed? Can I hit 100? It trounces a Ninja 400 in stock form for sure. If you're looking for the finest in entry-level sport bike offerings, I think you could do a whole lot worse than the KTM RC390. What is going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Yammy Noob. Today, we are test riding and reviewing our brand new giveaway KTM RC390, the new 2023 edition of this motorcycle. It's received a lot of nice updates, a bit of a refinement on the old RC390, uh, and it's a, it's a pretty sweet little ride. But as I mentioned, this is a giveaway motorcycle, so head over to shop.yammynoob.co, and for the next three days, I'm going to give you 5x entries to win this motorcycle. Uh, we're going to have this bike for quite a bit of time, so you have plenty of chances to get in to enter to win it, but uh, if you want those 5x uh, entries, you got to get in on the next three days. You can also sign up as a member over on yamanube.co. That's the best way to get your entries to win this thing and to uh, join our Discord and all the behind the scenes content we've got going on. Uh, that's going to be the best way to do it. Uh, but let's, uh, let's have some fun at this bike today, shall we? So brief overview, the RC390 is KTM's kind of like entry level point into their brand. Um, as far as I could tell on their website, they're not selling the Duke 390 here in America anymore. I could not find it on the website. So I think this is KTM's uh, de facto entry level option. So it features the same lovable 373cc single cylinder, uh, liquid cooled, dual overhead cam, four valve per cylinder, all that good stuff, uh, making about 47 horsepower and 28 foot pounds of the Lord's Torque, if I remember correctly. Key upgrades that the new RC390 has received is uh, this front suspension. So now features a WP Apex adjustable suspension up at the front. This is not top shelf stuff, you know, you can't expect a uh, motorcycle that comes in under 5,500 bucks to have top shelf suspension, but it is cool that you've got some clickers here and you can actually change the way the suspension feels, how much dive you're getting under braking, how much rebound is coming back. Uh, it seems like you've got Pretty, uh, you know, easy adjustments for rebound and compression here. Uh, no preload adjustment on the front, but you do have preload out back. So this shock out back here actually has preload, and uh, that is a pretty sweet little feature as well. Um, yeah, this motorcycle comes from factory if you want with an optional quick shifter as well, which is really cool. Uh, and yeah, I've actually got a lot of experience with the RC390. I used to own one as a track day mule. I ran that bike for about a year and a half um, as a kind of training tool. And I also gave away in 2019 an original RC390. So the big talking point on this bike, obviously, or the looks. Um, and I gotta say, when I saw the renderings online, I was like, what have they done? They made this motorcycle so ugly, but it doesn't really translate in person. In person, this thing looks really, really cool. Um, honestly, I, I thought the renderings online looked a bit weird, but this big KTM here looks really upmarket. This nice layer over the gas tank here, the KTM Rays logo here on the side. Um, there's a lot going on here with this bike, this kind of like, like pattern right here in the front fairing, uh, this kind of prolonged windshield situation here. It's really, really cool. Um, it actually works really well. Also, you get a nice little uh, rubber band to check how deep you're uh, using your suspension on this bike, which is a pretty cool feature. Um, yeah, how about, we, uh, how about we mount up on this thing? A couple other things I want to talk about before we start riding it. Really nice seat. Uh, really nice material on this seat. Very sporty. Uh, I do like that a lot. Have the cockpit here. You swing a leg over. And it's a svelte, small little machine, which I love. These beginner bikes are always really, really small. But this one in particular, because that single cylinder, really narrow between the legs here. Really nice to ride. Um, you'll be able to notice here that unlike the uh, Ninja 400 and Yamaha R3, the new one has this a little bit. These clip-ons are very flat with the triple tree here. They go underneath, but they rise up a little bit. So a traditional sport bike clip-on, like in an R6 or something, it clips on right there and it goes straight direct out here. So you would expect the clip-ons to be about here on a real super sport. But this bike is kind of like sport plus. It's not quite super sport in ergonomics, but uh, it actually is very, very sporty. It seats a lot like the Triumph Speed Triple 1200 Double R. Kind of that middle ground, kind of like in an RS660 kind of territory. It's like a nice split difference between a Super Sport and a proper, uh, you know, 
uh, it's kind of sport turning bike or something like that. Peg height is nice, not too high. Uh, overall, I think this is a bike, in terms of like a very sporty entry level option, you could totally ride this thing around. It's really not that bad. Firing it on here, you'll notice that now it comes with a TFT display. That's pretty cool. The old RC390 did not have this. This is coming from that Duke 390, all the new KTMs have this TFT display. Some of them have even bigger TFT displays, which is cool. And yeah, you've got some pretty simple modes here. You've got, uh, you know, ABS road. You can turn on traction control. You can turn it off as well. So nice feature set here. You can also get like a KTM Bluetooth connect thing, but who the hell does that? Anyways, let's start it up, shall we? Let's go ahead and put it in neutral. So it does this weird thing. I've noticed that actually on today's ride where like you go to start it up and it doesn't do it the first time. And then you don't have to press the button again. It retries to start itself automatically, which is kind of peculiar. Uh, adjustable levers too, which is nice. So you can adjust your reach there, which is pretty cool. Lots of small premium features on this bike, which is what we're really going to get into today. Let's get a sound clip, shall we? That, you know, lovable, classic, buzzy little 373cc KTM engine we've come to know and love. It is a known soundtrack. But uh, let's get this bike on the road, shall we? Let's do the obligatory wheelie test here really quick, too. I'm, uh, I'm pretty sure it'll pass with some flying colors. Let's see. Oh, TC was on. I forgot that this little bike has TC. I'm not used to my entry-level bikes having traction control. I get the power to cut off on me. <laughs> Let's see here. MTC off. Release the button. Cool. It is now off. Well, let's try that again, shall we? Yeah, traction control. Uh, it does seem to work on this bike, doesn't it? <laughs> yep. Nice little wheelie there. First gear runs out pretty quick, so you can't chase it out, uh, as far as I've found. Second gear seems kind of impossible to do wheelies on this thing, but hey, I'm not the greatest wheelie artist, so maybe someone else out there can, uh, can do proper RC390 rolling balance point wheelies. I'm not that guy. I'm more of a track day specialist. <laughs> Which this bike is all about the track day specialism, baby. This thing really excels on track, on canyon roads. This is the sort of bike where you would want to buy this if you're, you know, maybe you live like here in Austin, you got access to lots of great twisty hill country roads or canyon roads out in California. This is a bike that's just svelte, fun, effervescent, playful in the twisties, and really laser focused. Uh, as you guys saw in my beginner bike ranked video, I ranked this bike pretty high in the beginner bike pantheon. I think I ranked it second or third place. And that's because it's just, it's got a lot going for it, man. Um, it's not as flexible, as flattering as something like a Ninja 400. It's definitely a little sharper nosed, but I think it's all the better for it. If you know you want to get into sport bikes, the RC390 is a fantastic entry point. I'd say skip the R6. Don't get yourself some, some crazy leader bike as your first thing. This motorcycle will teach you everything you need to know about riding sport bikes. This thing is fantastic. The biggest feeling I get out of this thing is when I flick it on its side. It's so confidence inspiring. It's so dialed in. It's so ready to just like hold a line perfectly. And you know, this thing weighs, I think about 330 pounds or something like that. Someone could correct me if I'm wrong, but it's a very lightweight motorcycle and you really feel it, you know? You bang it through left and right here. It's very darty, very narrow very willing to uh, lean over on the side of the tire. Now, I've always felt that the RC390, because I had one as a track day bike and a giveaway bike, uh, I've always felt that the engine was a little bit of a mismatch with the, with the frame and the way this bike performs. Um, that's why I'm extremely curious about that KTM RC8C, that limited edition track only bike that they make. Because while the single cylinder is a great power plant on this bike, it doesn't really rev out in the way that I would want a Super Sport to rev out. And everything about this bike tells me Super Sport. Yes, like let's go, let's rip it up. And the single cylinder, it just, you know, it only revs out to about 10,000, which is actually quite a bit for a single cylinder. Uh, normally these singles only peter out about eight or 9,000 RPM. So 10K is pretty good, but it always feels like it's leaving a little bit on the table. You know, it always feels like this motorcycle should be revving out a little bit more. It uh, makes a lot of this kind of like mid-range punchy torque um, 
which is great for the kind of road duty that it does, right? Like I'm in third gear right now, 4,000 RPM. I can roll and throttle. And unlike a Ninja 400 or an R3, I've got really nice linear power there. So that's good for the kind of road stuff you're gonna do with this bike. But overall, uh, I, I would want a little bit more top end rush, especially when I'm seated like this and I see flashy colors and this cool cockpit. You know, I would want a motorcycle that feels a little bit more, uh, you know, a little bit sportier in terms of its engine. So that's the one thing I've always felt about the RC390, but everything else is so great that you can forgive it. Uh, I'll give this guy a little bit of space here, but gosh, I just wanna, I wanna tack these corners with the little RC here. It's so much fun to rail this bike around. Doesn't take much to catch up to a pickup truck on this thing, I'll tell you that. <laughs> it's a super fun bike to go like this from like left to whoop, all the way over to the right. Super fun. Uh, that's a big thing for me is the side to side transitions on motorcycles is really where you can feel how they react and how they really behave. You know, when you're kind of awkwardly off the geometry of the bike, you haven't really set it and you're going left to right. Um, that's where you really feel a bike's handling prowess. You know, something like Hayabusa feels so awkward going left to right. It's so much mass going from one side to the other side. But uh, the RC here, it's so, it's so narrow and small and fun. Uh, it, it's really, really great. One thing I want to point out is sizing on this bike, right? So that's a big thing, and I think I don't talk about it enough. This motorcycle, it is on the smaller side, right? If you're more American-sized, let's say, uh, and I say that with all the kindness in the world, guys, but statistically speaking, uh, Americans are on the portlier side. Um, I count myself lucky that I'm, I'm not among that. Uh, but Americans are a little bit bigger, and so a motorcycle like this might not fit you if you are above 230 pounds, maybe five foot 11, six foot, something like that. I don't think this would be a very appropriate motorcycle to own if that were the case. Um, I find myself, I'm about five foot 11, about 165 pounds or so. And uh, I feel like I just barely fit on this motorcycle. I feel like it's it's a little small, but I like it that it's small. You know, it kind of feels like you're, you're in a Miata or something like that. You know, yeah, it's a small vehicle, but that's kind of the point, right? You're on a small thing so that you can have fun and enjoy it. Um, that's kind of my whole bag with this. Let's do this. Let's flip around back here because I really feel like I was just stuck behind that pickup truck the entire time I was uh, on that nice little stretch of twisty road. So let's go ahead and flip a little U-turn here. Talk a little bit about the RC390's low speed prowess. And, you know, since it's so lightweight and flickable, honestly, the low speeds are great. The clutch pull is really nice. Throttle feel is okay. I'd give it like a seven out of 10. Um, but, you know, the only thing that hampers the low speed on this bike are the ergonomics. Since you're a little bit more leaned over, newer riders might find that a little awkward, but if you don't have a reference point for a tall bike with a lot of leverage and big wide handlebar, yeah, you won't really know the difference. So let's see about this bike in these twisties here. Trail that in. Oh yeah. On off throttle's beautiful. Trail it in. Keep that nice, easy going street pace. We're not out here crushing lap records on some random road in Austin. But we'll keep it wide open all the way through fifth gear, guys. That's a ton of fun. I'm still wide open in fifth right here. Coasted on the brakes a little bit because I see my entry point changing. Rolling on fifth, didn't downshift there. Still wide open in fifth. Down two gears. We got a bit of a tighter corner coming up. Having some fun playing with the RC. Keep it in third, let's see how it does. Some gravel on the road right there. Easy peasy, keep it upright. Lean it over. Look through your point. Yeah, look how fun this thing is, man. Do you really need more than this on the road? If you're actually trying to get good and ride your motorcycle? The amount of time that I'm wide open on this thing is so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's so fun to just be wide open all the time and feel like you're just absolutely railing around, but you're only doing like 60 or 70 miles per hour. That's the joy of the little bikes, man. And that, that's why I had so much fun with my bike and when I had it as a track mule and I really got good with it is uh, you just get to spend so much time wide open throttle. Wow, that is so unfortunate, right behind a trailer. Let's see if I can get around this guy. 
I will definitely do some highway testing on this thing and some more commuting style stuff with it. But uh, I mean, you buy an RC390 to enjoy it in the twisties, do you not? That's the whole point of the bike. So I feel like I'm trying to test it in conditions that most people would want to use it in. Jeez, I feel like that bicycle back there could pass this guy. This is pretty ridiculous, dude. <laughs> All right, folks, we're back in it. Enjoying this bike the way it was meant to be enjoyed. And I gotta say, of all the fundamentals, the braking feel, the master cylinder feel, um, this bike's fantastic. Out of the box, it feels amazing. <laughs> for a little entry-level bike, it trounces a Ninja 400 in stock form, for sure. It's really good. It's got such great front-end feel. And this isn't even on track, this is just like, you know, fun goofing around street pace. And bone stock, this thing's fantastic. I'd love to get some stickier rubber on it. I think it's on some Conti road attacks or something like that. I would love to see it on like a Diablo Rosso 2 or something, or maybe a, a Super Corsa if they make it in the size. It's been a while since I had the size tires for a little bike, but uh, yeah, I, man, I'm really impressed. You can carry a ton of corner speed with this thing. A ton of corner speed. You can basically stay wide open everywhere. And that's how I remember riding my RC390 on track is it's all about the corner speed on the little bikes. You know, fun fact, the little bikes actually have higher sustained corner speeds in uh, MotoGP than the big GP bikes. A Moto3 bike typically corners faster than a MotoGP bike because they're so lightweight. And that's how they actually make up their time. But boy, what a ride of a little bike, dude. Beginners are just spoiled for choice nowadays. You look back 10 years ago, that was when the Ninja 300 was just coming out. R3 didn't exist, RC390 didn't exist. Um, gosh, you're just spoiled for choice nowadays. These bikes are great. You get this cool TFT display, you get this nice look out of the cockpit, adjustable suspension, adjustable levers, a nice master cylinder feel, all in a package that makes sense for the entry level rider. I think a lot of folks get it in their head that they don't need a little bike like this, but I'm telling you, if you stick to the process and you trust the process and you get yourself a small bike, you will, whoa, this thing's spitting out water. <laughs> you will, uh, learn as a rider you will grow as a rider right, i'm gonna get around this guy we have to check the speed bump potential how stiff is the suspension on the rc390 let's see let's hit the speed bump at 40. yeah you know guys most motorcycles if you just stand up speed bumps are just like no issue at all i've done that before on a freaking fire blade and it's fine <laughs> and yeah like if you stand up out of the saddle that stiff suspension doesn't really become an issue anymore. Um, you know, it's much more tolerable. Look at that beautiful view. It's a lovely fall day here in Austin. Beautiful. It's like 80 degrees right now. This is our riding season, folks. <laughs> this is what we wait all year for is spring and fall. Summer is a hellscape here. What a great bike. I'm having so much fun on this bike. <laughs> I, I love these little bikes, man. Um, it's why I got a new uh, CMRA Prep Ninja 400. I wanted to go racing again on the little bikes. They're just, they're so much fun to ride and you just feel like you use every ounce of them. And when you're riding at your limit or the bike's limit, you're learning, you know, if you're operating in that 95th percentile um, at race pace, you're, you're figuring things out, you're learning. All right, so this is kind of our bumpy road test here. Um, and yeah, it's, it's not great, you know. Uh, the RC390 is a stiff motorcycle. It's a stiff bike. The frame is stiff. The suspension's stiff. The rear shock is pretty stiff, even for my weight. Uh, it's, it's a stiff rear shock. And uh, yeah, I, I don't think there's any qualms about that. I think most people would assume that that to be the case, you know? But this is, I mean, this is what it's all about though, isn't it folks? The weather's great, sun's out. You're on a fun sport bike. You're gonna try to get a zero to 60 pull right here but I don't think it's gonna happen because it's turning green. All right, screw it, we're gonna, we're gonna see how fast it accelerates. Four gears to get to 60, folks. Oh my God, this thing's geared short. I had to get through four gears to get to 60. What's my top speed? Can I hit 100? I clipped 100 right there. You had to really sustain that. 
I, I honestly think this thing would top out at about 103, 104. That was downhill too. So it's not a top speed weapon, so to speak. And if you're doing a lot of highway stuff, and I mean like proper, like, you know, 85 mile per hour kind of stuff, maybe not the best bike, you know? Here on this highway here in Austin, uh, you know, this is Highway 360. Um, you know, this is a road that people go about 60, 65 on, you know, because it's not exactly a highway. It's just kind of like a bigger street, sort of. Um, and, you know, in those conditions, this bike makes a lot of sense. But I, I do think if you're trying to crush, like, highway miles and really do some big distance and uh, sustained 85 mile per hour speeds, this definitely is not the best bike because at 85 miles per hour, you're apparently at 85% of the total top speed of the availability on this motorcycle because I could not believe it took four gears to get to 60. We're going to try that again from zero here, and uh, we'll get a little a little test for, uh, for the editor. If you could put in the time, Yusaku, that I get here, that would be great. Yep, that's 60. I think that was about like maybe five or six seconds. My launch wasn't that great. I'll retry that up here. We'll get another one. We'll get another little zero to 60 test on this bad boy. <laughs> it's great. You can just bang off four gears in public and uh, nobody, nobody thinks anything of it. That's pretty fantastic. All right, we're trying again. We'll launch it a little harder this time. I gave it that gentle street launch. I'm actually just gonna freaking send it on this one. Let's see. That was not sending it. <laughs> that was a very casual launch. And 60. <laughs> you do feel a little silly, but I mean, come on, it's, it's, it's fun, you know? It's a fun little bike. Highway Manners, fifth gear here, cruising on the RC390 on the highway. And, you know, it's a bike that it will do this sort of thing. You start noticing the vibrations from the single cylinder. I'm not going to lie. It's a, a little not so fun to, to feel those vibrations coming through the pegs and the, and the side of the gas tank here. It is a pretty vibrational engine, but hey, it's a single cylinder. That's kind of what it's supposed to be doing, you know? Like, it's supposed to be vibrating. Um, it's not going to be a motorcycle that you're like, oh yeah, like this is a super silky smooth inline four power. It's a single cylinder, guys. But yeah, I find myself wanting to click up into sixth, even going 60, just to kind of mellow it out a little bit. And then, you know, we'll see here, I'm pulling 70-ish miles per hour. It'll totally do it. I'm not gonna sit here and be like, oh no, you can't do 75 miles per hour with this motorcycle. You 100% can. It just feels like it's not the happiest bike doing it. Now, it's not like the Duke 200, which I have no idea why they sold that motorcycle in the United States where the top speed was about 70. So to commute with that thing in America, you had to literally redline it all the time. Uh, the RC390 is a much more flexible motorcycle than that. Yeah, overall, man, this is a really, really fun little motorcycle. I think that if you're in the market for your first motorcycle, you know that you like sport bikes, kind of like me, right? Like I like sport bikes a lot. Um, I don't love them riding them on the street as much anymore nowadays, but uh, I do still love sport bikes. And, uh, you know, you want to get into that lifestyle. You can see yourself doing some track days and trying to race and get good, you know. Man, this bike, dude, is great for that. Great motorcycle for that, man. You could get it. You could then modify it, keep it, turn it into your race bike, turn it into a track training tool. You could get a bigger bike and then come back to this one and realize that you don't know anything about riding and then ride this bike more than you ride the big bike. Um, and what a great journey that would be for, for most people, man. What an awesome time it would be for this motorcycle if that's how people experienced it. I think it's it's honestly a really, really high rating for me on this one. For the amount of fun I'm having with this thing, I'd rate it a nine out of 10. It's a lot of fun to ride. Um, but I totally understand that for a lot of people, this wouldn't fit, right? Like, let's talk about the people that this wouldn't fit for, right? Like, if you're not super sure about sport bikes, yeah, I wouldn't get an RC390, a Ninja 400 or a Z400 would make more sense because then you can kind of dip your toe a little bit. You're not as ergonomically compromised on a Z400. This bike is pretty ergonomically compromised. Um, you know, if you're maybe over 200 pounds, over six foot, this bike probably wouldn't fit you as well either. Um, I think this bike definitely suits people that are between like 5'4 and 5'10, 5'11-ish. Um, you know, under 180, 190 pounds is probably best for this thing. Uh, but you know, you can ride whatever you want. I've seen plenty of bigger guys 
getting it on little bikes and having fun. Uh, but I just think that the bike is going to work a little bit better if you are in that size range. But I'm not trying to fat shame anyone. Don't get it twisted. Uh, I think that if you're a big highway commuter, maybe not the best bike either. Um, this bike definitely deserves that twisty road thing. I mean, right now I've just been sitting on this highway doing about 60, 65, and it's definitely not what this motorcycle wants to be doing. It wants to be carving it up in, uh, in that tight, twisty road setting. That's definitely what it wants to be doing. But, you know, it's still a lot of fun to ride around. But, yeah, if you find yourself, I think if you're an entry-level sport bike guy, you love the look of it. I mean, this bike looks super cool, doesn't it? It stands out like a, a freaking flying tomato or something. It's, uh, it's quite fun. I guess a flying pumpkin would be more accurate. All right, six gear, gotta go down. How many? One, two, three, four. Yeah, four gears. Let's, let's do it in second over here. <laughs> you just, you feel like you're racing with it all the time. Like, how cool is that? And you're not going that fast. That's what's cool about it, you know? It's a motorcycle that, you know, you feel like you're ripping through the gears and you're, you're winding it out and you're enjoying it. And yet at the same time, you're, you're just simply not going that fast. It's got a freaking 103 mile per hour top speed, basically. So, you know, unless you're a complete dingus, like, yeah, like right now, this yeah, I'm in this neighborhood, it's 30 mile per hour speed limit. Sure, I could be doing 60 through this corner, but that would be pretty outrageous, you know? So yeah, you could definitely still get into trouble with it. And that's the funny thing about little bikes is people assume that because you're on a little bike, you can't get into trouble, you can't get hurt as bad. This thing will still hurt you, man. It's still a motorcycle. It's still a full-size motorcycle. Um, you need to be careful in riding these things. You can't just assume that because you're on a little bike, you can just get away with murder and do whatever you want because that is absolutely not the case. You gotta really check your surroundings and still ride defensively and gotta make sure you don't eat yourself off a cliff. I remember seeing a clip of a guy, I think he was on an R3, and he was on the canyons, and he just freaking flew over the side of this mountain on his bike. I hope he was okay, but I remember seeing that video, and I was like, geez, dude, like, he got messed up on that, probably. Um, so, yeah, I I like the RC390 a whole lot. I owned one myself, personally. I gave one away previously. I think this new version has some great updates on it as well. The adjustable suspension, the updated looks, slightly lighter weight, I think, by a couple pounds on the frame they saved, or the subframe, I can't quite remember. Quick shifter optional, we don't have it on this bike, unfortunately, did not spec that in. But uh, I think it's a, it's a really, really sweet bike. And I'm super excited to be giving it away, guys. So I think that's gonna wrap up this video. Got tons more to say about the RC390. We're gonna be making tons of content with this thing. I'm super excited to own it and ride it for as long as I am. Definitely gonna compare it to the Ninja 400 RC or, uh, R3, do some track comparisons. I wanna get an exhaust on it, modify it a little bit, stick your tires, do some track testing with it, see what kind of times we can pull with this thing. And yeah, just enjoy the thing, huh? That sounds like a ton of fun. Remember guys, head over to shop.emedive.co. You don't have to put in any code. For the next three days or so, uh, you can get 5X entries to win the RC390. If you want as well, head over to yamminoob.co. That's the best way to get entered to win these motorcycles. Um, you'll get access to our Discord server, automatic entries to win, all the bikes you want. You get 10% off on the store. I really think that if you haven't yet, you should definitely consider becoming a member over on yamminoob.co. With all that being said, thanks so much for watching, guys. I'm going to keep enjoying this bike a little bit longer. I've got a meeting i got to run to here in a little bit, but I'm going to carve up this twisty road before I go to my meeting. I'll catch you guys in the next one. See you later.